Yeah, because I, the thing I haven't said is that he receives a gift from his mother the day that she dies. Like, right before he's taken into space and she dies, she gives him a, a gift wrapped in paper. Mm -hmm. And we find out later that he's never opened it. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, we haven't really discussed this with each other ever, but I think the the reason that he's okay with opening it at the end is this kind of family theme mm -hmm. that's, that's threaded throughout these movies. It's that, you know, Peter's a kid that has no family. Yeah. Um, he's an orphan. He's in space alone. Of course, he's been raised by Yondu and the Ravager team, but it's not something that he thinks of as family at least at the time, at the, at the beginning of the first movie. Sure. Um, and then over the course of the first movie, as he um, kind of works with Rocket, Groot, Gamora, and Drax, mm -hmm. they kind of become a family. Um, and it's like, it's not the family that you have, it's not maybe the family that you wanted but it's the family that you get and the family that you choose and as they move on and develop their relationship in the first movie and into the second movie mm -hmm. they you know become a family i mean they definitely become a family unquestionably like at the end of the first movie groot actually sacrifices himself for the, the rest of the team. Because mm -hmm. they're about to crash land. He kind of grows this branch ball around everyone mm -hmm. to protect them from the impact. But it destroys him in the process. Yeah. And, you know, Rocket has is like super mournful about this. And, of course, Drax sits down beside him and pets him on the head to to comfort him, and it's like the first time that Rocket really allows that touch. Yes. Um, because he is very, pardon the pun, touchy about getting <laughs> touched. Because he's been abused, right? I mean, he's he's experienced abuse at the hands of these scientists mm -hmm. who did experiments on him and things like this. So he, he associates touch with pain. Yeah. And this is like the first time he allows touch for the purpose of comfort. Yeah. And it's not like somebody's making fun of him and treating him like he's a pet animal rather than a person, because he believes he's a person. You know, yes, he's a raccoon, but he's a person. He walks on all fours. He shoots guns. He thinks like a, a person. Um, so, yeah, that's a really poignant moment at the end of this. And then um, another poignant moment is that, you know, after everything's wrapped up and they're back on the ship, Peter decides to finally open the gift, mm -hmm. and it's a, a second mixtape yeah. from his mom. So it's like he has all this new music that he can actually share with his new family as they go on their new adventures as the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. It's it's a great one. There's so much heart in this movie. There's on, so in much both, heart. Yeah, in both. I mean... I, I see them as one in my head. I do. I, I totally see them as one as well. It's almost hard for me... I mean, before we watched them again, I would say it was hard for me to remember what happened in one versus the other. Mm, yes. Because that kind of runs together. And I'm saying that as a positive. Yeah. I love that about these. Because they are part of the bigger Marvel Universe. But they are their own thing, and the mm -hmm. characters in them have such strong relationships developed over the course of it, and it goes through the whole thing. 